Hi everyone, Roger here, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so about a month ago, about four weeks ago, I got the Poco F4 GT. I did uh, an initial impressions or an unboxing video and now I've actually had the phone for about a month, for about four weeks, and it's been my main phone. So I've used this for everything like WhatsApp, uh, I've used this to make phone calls, I've been gaming on this, of course I have. One of the things that's quite interesting, something that I've done a little bit of messing around with is the camera, of course, I've taken photos and videos. We're gonna look at some of the samples in today's video. So this is my review, this is how I feel about the phone. After having it for about four weeks, and if you like this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing just down there, and that way you won't miss any of my future videos. So we already did this with the initial impressions or the unboxing, but let's just very quickly talk about what you get in the box. So you get all the usual things that you would expect, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, so that's a thick USB-C cable, and that has an angled connector. Uh, which is awesome because if you're charging the phone and you're playing games the cable stays out of the way so love that that's brilliant uh, you also get a 120 watt charger for absolutely crazy fast charging speeds you do get a clear case included which is awesome i'm glad they still do that and xiaomi do that as well of course and obviously you've got the phone itself which looks really nice i like the design it's fairly minimalistic it's not over the top it still has that gaming flair and around the actually around the camera module there is uh you do get rgb so that lights up around the camera module when you're charging the phone and also while you're playing games and for notifications and stuff like that you can turn that on and off so you don't have to have that on but i think that looks pretty cool so as we know, one of the big things about the Poco F4 GT are those shoulder buttons. You slide a, a slider switch and the buttons pop up. I think that works really well. Definitely awesome for people that like to game. Uh, I've played quite a bit of Fortnite now on the F4 GT, and I will say that those buttons really do come in very handy. Uh, it just it just improves the whole gaming experience with most games. They're pretty handy to have. And if you're wondering, it's really easy to assign actions to those buttons. And you do that with the Game Booster software. And you literally just drag a small circle to part of the screen where you may tap to fire or you may tap to jump. And you can literally just assign those actions to the keys. Super easy to do, takes seconds, which is awesome. Now let's talk about performance for a moment. The Poco F4 GT is running Android 12 and MIUI 13. Most people are gonna know this already, but the F4 GT has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. So you're getting like flagship style performance. You're getting really good performance from this smartphone. So what does that mean? Well, that means that games run extremely well. Multitasking is just perfect. You know, navigating around menus and all of that kind of stuff. It's all very smooth. It's all a lovely experience. Uh, everything runs just so well. Now it is definitely worth mentioning that this smartphone does get warm. So Poco have rearranged some of the inside of the phone. They've kind of rearranged stuff to try and help with heat dissipation. So it's nice that they're doing that. It's nice they're paying attention to heat dissipation, but it does still get warm, especially if you're gaming. It's unavoidable. Most smartphones, if you're gaming, will get warm. This is no exception. But it's good to know that Poco are trying to combat that issue. But you know, just bear in mind, if you're using it for gaming, it does still get warm. Also, the one I've got here has 12 gig of RAM and 256 gig of storage, and that's UFS 3.1 storage. You can also get a smaller model though with eight gig of RAM and 128 gig of storage. I haven't used that version, so I'm not really gonna comment on that. I'll just talk about the one I have here with the higher RAM and the higher storage. And as I said, it's been great. So it's a nice phone, it's very smooth, everything runs very well. And then of course, one of the big features of any smartphone, especially nowadays, is the camera. So let's quickly talk about the camera. So you get three rear cameras, a 64 megapixel f1.9 wide angle. You also get an eight megapixel f2.2 ultra wide and a two megapixel f2.4 macro. Now this won't come as any surprise, but if you're looking to take the absolute best photos and the best video footage that you can, then you should use the main camera. That's the same with any phone. You can see some sample photos here and they're really nice. The saturation is looking good. Nothing is oversaturated in my opinion. And the colors look great as well. Everything seems to be exposed evenly. And you know, the images just overall, everything looks 
quite good. I do, I, I, I quite like the way the photos look. So if you're planning on using the wide, the ultra wide, and also the macro for your photos, it's just good to be aware that color consistency, you know, across all three, it, it's not perfect. So it's just something to be aware of. The front facing camera is good as well. That's a 20 megapixel F 2.4 camera, and it takes good photos and videos, you know, and for video calls and stuff like that. Mainly, I think that's what you're gonna be using the front facing camera for video calls maybe the odd selfie not that i normally take them but you know for video calls and stuff like that that front facing camera is absolutely fine it's very very good actually something else that i think is not spoken about enough and that's the speakers so there are four speakers and they are i think the loudest speakers i've ever heard on a smartphone and they're great too. They sound really good as well. So they're good for gaming, they're good for watching videos, they're good for everything really. And they're also in a fantastic position. So when you hold the phone and you're gaming, the speakers on the ends here are not covered up by your fingers, even when you're holding the phone like this. So fantastic speakers on the F4 GT. So a quick mention of some of the other features you get. It supports 5G, of course it does. It has a fingerprint sensor built into the power button. You get face unlock as well. NFC, so you can use Google Pay, for example. It charges from zero to 100% in just over 15 minutes. That's crazy. That's just like the Xiaomi 12 Pro. Very fast charging. I mean, who's not gonna love that? That's fantastic. Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 6E, and you still get an IR blaster, which I absolutely love. So after talking about all of that, all of those amazing specs and everything that the smartphone can do, is it worth the money? Because it's not a cheap smartphone. Well, I'd say yes. I'd say you're definitely going to get what you pay for. If Poco end up dropping the price of this smartphone, perhaps by another 50 pounds or $50, then I'd say that would be an absolutely fantastic deal for the money. But as it is, priced as it is, it's a great smartphone and I do think you get your money's worth. So if you have the Poco F4 GT or you're thinking about buying it, or maybe you've got questions about the phone, maybe there's something you want to know about with the shoulder buttons or the camera or the software or anything, then you know what to do. Leave me a comment down below and ask away. But I'm really interested to know if you guys are thinking about buying this or, you know, just what you think about the, the F4 GT, what you think about, you know, the smartphones that Poco have released so far. What do you think about this? Let me know, leave me a comment down below. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.